or welcome back to the channel and welcome to rural uh, Oxfordshire I think or it could be Wiltshire or it could be Berkshire uh, this video is a it's a sort of 5,000 mile owner's review of the R1250 GS except I've done closer to 6,000 miles on it now so maybe it's a 5,500 mile review And it's also an opportunity to have a ride out on some roads that I have never ridden before. I, I am down, staying near Walkingham this week. Um, I've taken a week off work to come and do a, a driver training gig for some DFT accident investigators. I'm having a fantastic week. It's the really hot week that we're having so towards the end of July. And this is not a part of the world that I am familiar with at all. I've passed through this area a few times, never spent any time on any of the rural roads. And I have been so pleasantly surprised at what a lovely part of the world this is. And what a really nice place it is to come have a ride on the bike or drive in the car. Um, I think those of us that live in the north of England have this vision of the southeast of England being totally gridlocked and just full of traffic and awful. And actually some of the people who come and see me for some driver coaching travel up from the southeast they often complain that the traffic's really bad but look at this all right it's only a 50 limit at the moment but who needs to go fast what a gorgeous part of the world so I'm quite busy on the videos recently doing a lot of the uh, advanced driving test videos and I'll be doing more of those but I've done a bike video for a while so I thought I'd travel down here on the bike, brought my cameras with me. Let's do a sort of 5,000 mile review of the R1250GS. I'll put a link below to the earlier review video that I did of this, of this bike, just after I bought it. Where I uh, sort of said it was a Swiss Army bike. It's really, really good at lots and lots of things, not perfect at any of them. But for me, I need a bike that uh, that does everything really well, rather than one thing perfectly. It is an ideal bike. So if you remember, I bought the bike with about 700 miles on it. It was an ex-demo bike from Bowker's. It's a 2020 R1250 GS exclusive, which is just the trim level. And if you watch the first video before this one, you'll see what my thoughts were about the bike, what I like about it, some of the things I didn't like about it. One of the things I commented on was the quick shifter, which I didn't think was particularly good on this bike. So I'll share my thoughts with you a little bit later in the video about the quick shifter, whether it's improved with miles or not. But I'll start with the issue that I was having with the bike. If you remember from the last video, I was telling you that uh, the engine light kept coming on and yes the engine light's on there but don't worry that's my fault that's not that's not a problem with the bike but the engine light kept coming on because of an issue with uh, the exhaust and it was an, it was a particular issue with the exhaust flap which opens and makes for a more sporty noise when you put it in dynamic pro so it had been back to the dealers once been back to Bowker's once and they'd uh, sort of flashed the ECU they'd given it an update clean the flap and said go and try it and see what you think well of course within two weeks that fault code was coming up again so I took it back I think the last time I did a video it was due to go in and have that repair done anyway they've replaced all the exhaust headers and the flap unit with parts from 2021 bike and it's cured I've not had an issue with it since it works absolutely perfectly well and I haven't had a single issue with the bike since then the only reason that the engine light is on at the moment is it's due a service and of course just arrived down here in Berkshire when it flashed up on the dashboard service is due get it to the dealer so it's Wednesday today it's going back into Bowker's on Friday for a 6,000 mile service quite sure what that entails oil change brake fluid perhaps bits and pieces tickle over 
look at these roads, absolutely stunning out here. <coughs> Bit of a shame it's uh, limited to 50 miles an hour, but even so, what a gorgeous piece of road. So what else? Well, I bought in another couple of presents, because you do, don't you? <coughs> bought some um, protective bars to go in front of the fairing higher up on the front. Just in case I drop it again, like I did on Hard Knock Pass. Stationary. Mm. Huh. Bought one of these cool seat covers. Uh, this actually is a really, really good addition to the bike. I can't recommend these highly enough. I'll show you some pictures of it now. Um, what it basically does is it sits above the seat itself and it creates a sort of cushion of air. Air flows underneath your um, your backside and your ghoulies and keeps them nice and cool. On days like this it's absolutely lovely. But there's another advantage to it as well. Um, if you leave the bike in the rain, you don't need to wipe the seat off with the towel. The water drains through it and it rains, I wouldn't say it remains completely dry, but it remains virtually dry. So on a wet day you don't end up sitting on a wet seat. Which is very nice. And the other thing I've done to it is got rid of those flipping Bridgestone tyres which came with a standard. Come on BMW, you can do better than that. There are better tyres on the market than that. And of course this is the point where sat at home a couple of days later 200 miles away from the roads where I did the original filming I find out that the SD card filled up and it didn't carry on recording on my main camera and of course the main camera is the one that I record the sound on so uh, rather than bin this video because they are lovely roads and it was a really nice ride out that evening um, I thought I'd just finish the video with a little bit of a voiceover and you can watch it from that camera that makes it look like you're on the pillion of the bike with me so back to the tyres then yeah I swapped those Bridgestones for Michelin Road 5s which I think are a, a just a much much better tyre in all conditions on the road let's be honest I'm not going to use this bike off road at all I don't need any off road capability on the tyres I want a good long lasting capable road tyre and the Michelin Road 5 just is the perfect one for me really I've, I've not ridden anything better than that plenty of grip in the dry really outstanding in the wet suits the bike nicely and uh, and they do the right size for the GS with the larger front wheel so yeah it's on Michelin Roll 5s now and I have nothing to complain about at all with the tyres and nothing else really to complain about with the bike I'm, I said that I was going to mention the quick shifter um, when I first got the bike it was really tight and quite clunky um, and a few people messaged me and thanks to those people actually saying give it a bit of time get a few thousand miles on it let it get bedded in and it will improve no end and actually it has done now it it isn't quite as good as it was on the XR and maybe that's just the nature of the gearbox maybe it's a heavy gearbox or something like that on the GS some mechanical reason why it's not quite uh, as good but it is far far better than it was when I first got the bike um, now it's been bedded in um, I tend to use the clutch on upshifts still, it's a little bit jerky on, on upshifts, you can feel your head nodding backwards and forwards when you just click it up without using the clutch. On downshifts it's pretty seamless really, it matches the revs nicely. Um, I still think the quick shifter works a bit better when you're properly on it, when you're really riding the bike fast and using the revs rather than using the torque, um, but I find that in, in the higher gears it, it's um, nice and smooth whatever you're doing changes down nice and smooth but isn't very good changing up sort of through first second third maybe up into fourth still a little bit clunky compared with with the other systems that I've used um, and I recently rode um, an F900R just a two-cylinder 900cc bike that, that BMW do and that showed you how good a quick shifter can be but, yeah the one on the GS isn't as snicky as that those on those lighter sportier bikes but yeah, I'm using it. I'm using it probably 50% of the gear changes. I'm using the quick shifter. Pick and choose when you use it, and it, um, it's a nice piece of kit to use. Other than that, no other issues with the bike. Still loving it. Getting the miles on it again now. Now we're uh, now we're out of lockdown. Nice to get out and go a bit further afield. Whether I'll get away on the bike, other than this trip down to Berkshire this year, I'm not sure. But um, see if we can see if we can get away while the weather remains nice before autumn sets in. 
Consumables wise, I've put about a litre of oil in the back over the last 5,000 miles. I don't consider that to be particularly heavy oil consumption. Um, this is the first time I've changed the tyres. Uh, I think I got about just less than 5,000 miles out of those Bridgestones before they were squared off. Put these Michelins on it. Not to do anything with the chain because it hasn't got one. Shaft drive is uh, is fabulous when it comes to using a bike every day. There's no regular tinkering with anything. And yeah, the bike just park it in the garage, get on it the next day, starts up, use it again. It's a very very usable everyday bike. This. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'm going to carry on doing the advanced driving videos and how to pass your advanced driving test might start a series on how to pass your advanced bike test at some stage but um, I've got to fit it in around everything else, I've been really busy at the moment so it's just finding the time to do this kind of stuff if you enjoyed the video give us a subscribe and a like and go have a look at the website as well racelocal.com, loads more information there about advanced driving and riding books that I've written and uh, you can get a day's driver or rider coaching with me if you fancy a ride out or a drive out. Drop us an email and we'll sort something out. But for now, thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And we'll see you next time.